What do you think about the multiverse theory? Almost all these theories are based off a very small amount of scientific observations. Like what? His proof for it is like 300 pages long. It's cr This guy was clearly batshit insane. This is why Einstein is so famous. But the cost of science has also become exponential. Please put a satellite into a black hole. I want to know what's on the other I side. I mean, if we did... Let's talk about background radiation. Is that what you called it? That's what it's called. Well, that's I know what very little about background radiation, right? So I talked with... Um, so there was a Nobel Prize awarded on this. I think the, the scientific mission was was in the early 90s, and it was a spacecraft that went out and mapped this as the background radiation of the universe. This was the famous story that was found, maybe it's just famous to, to radio engineers that when I went to school, of there was these guys on a military base, and I don't remember exactly what they were doing. They had this antenna, they had this radio telescope they were looking at things with, and they kept seeing noise on the telescope. And they thought it was birds nesting in the telescope. So they kept cleaning it out and cleaning it out and going like, what the fuck? Why is this thing noisy and checked everything? And what they realized is their instrument was perfectly fine. What they were viewing was the background radiation of the universe. And that apparently, according to physicists, comes from the beginning of the Big Bang. Like, don't ask me how or why. I actually have no idea. But what John did with this imager was be able to image and categorize it. And so it's, you, I'm sure you've seen the image before. Is this the thing that... It Hear me out. Is this the thing they're talking about where it looks like it looks like a brain, how how it's all connected? Is that what you're talking about? I don't I don't know what you're talking about. That sounds awesome. But no, it looks like it looks like almost a map of the world, even though it is the universe. So it's like this Good. oblong kind of ellipse. And in it you'll see light and dark spots. There's quieter spots of the universe. There's there's hotter spots of the universe. And I should call them colder and hotter because that's how they're measured. But I don't think we know why or understand why it's not uniform. This is kind of a big discovery. But again, there's so many cool things in science that we just, we discover, we go witness, and, and we actually don't know why. That's what makes this beautiful, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Please put a satellite into a black hole. Please put a satellite into a black hole. I want to know what's on the other I side. I mean, if we did, we wouldn't know, right? This, black holes are this... And black holes are such a cool concept, and it, it went through this whole thing of like, hey, if you have infinite gravity and you can draw these math equations that show we should have black holes, and then you start to have all these theories, things like Hawking radiation and these disks, and it wasn't until recently that we were able to image a black hole. Now, we didn't actually image a black hole because no light can escape a black hole, right, but show the disk and, and show everything going into it, and that was a, a pretty big moment because, it again, it goes through what is probably 100 years of theory going down into one image to say, holy shit, that theory was true. That theory that started out with basic principles of math and physics and a human sitting there thinking outside the box was able to prove this to be right. It's it's not very often that happens in, in human history, but it's kind of revolutionary when it does. And there's some lesser famous ones that I actually think are more impressive. Like what? I mean, look, talk to anybody about Maxwell's equations, these four fundamental equations of electromagnetism that are comp, I mean, his paper to do this is like his proof for it's like 300 pages long. It's cr this guy was clearly batshit insane. Came up with some of the most important theories for how the modern world operates with, with electronics. And um, I think he, because he wasn't good at the, the Hollywood style, because he wasn't good at, at articulating what he was doing, and because his proof is so fucking long that only some loser is going to sit there and read it. Um, it makes it so that you don't get the press from it, right? And like, you've probably never heard of Maxwell's equation. In fact, when I say Maxwell's, you probably think coffee, right? And this Maxwell house or whatever, like it, it doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't resonate with anybody at the same level because there is, there has always been a side of showmanship to science. This is why Einstein is so famous. You know who Einstein is. Probably because you always call somebody you don't like. You're like, oh yeah, you're, you're, you're an Einstein, right? Like you're stupid. Um, I love how we use his name to be that. The reason you know about Einstein, though, I think is because of the nuclear bombs, right? And I think if it wasn't for that, we may not know him at the same level. There's probably a more important physicist at the time, like Bohr with the atom, right? And, and other things, all these other physicists at the time that are, are really not as well known as Einstein because they didn't have, they didn't have the marketing. Interesting. What do, you, what do you think about the multiverse theory? Oh God, I know so little about this that I'm just gonna be totally, like multiverse theory is when you go into multiple dimensions to help describe phenomenon. It, it, it resonates from something called string theory. I don't know shit about it. And I think that these ideas are what you get when you extrapolate scientific equations. 
when you say, yes, if this happens, every possible scenario has to be true. Mm -hmm. Thus meaning we must have multiple universes for all of those scenarios to be true. And I, it, it's in pure conflict with other forms of our, of our theories, right? Like, okay, we, so do we make universes? Are they created every instance? Is the universe exponentially expanding? Like, you can kind of take this any direction you want. And to be honest with you, I haven't spent enough time here to ha have a good idea of like, is this, is this relevant? Is this not? I have no fucking idea. I think it's a cool theory. I think all these theories can be really interesting theories, but. I love diving nothing. into them. I love, it just fascinates me. Then I fall asleep. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a fun thing to talk about, but I think what's important to understand is almost all these theories are based off a very small amount of scientific observations. And the real way we're going to solve these theories is add more fucking scientific observations. Mm -hmm. And we've seen the capital cost and the capital allocation for each scientific observation go up by orders of magnitude. Look at the particle accelerators. We have how many particles accelerators in the United States? I mean, there's just, there's tons of, you can make a really small particle accelerator in your office. We made one. I don't recommend it. But Are you talking about the stuff like CERN? That's what I'm saying. As you get to CERN, they start to become, oh, these are now billion dollar projects. And then we start looking at things bigger than CERN and they're trillion dollar projects. And then this law of scale almost applies to everything in the universe. It's something we try to apply to companies as well. I want my company to grow at the same growth rate, right? We want it to be exponential growth rate, but the cost of science has also become exponential. Mm -hmm. I hope we can change that. I hope we can actually stop that dead in its tracks and bring it back because I think we've seen the lowering of the accessibility to space. We've seen the lowering of how we access space. We've seen the lowering thing of everything around the science of space except for doing the actual science in space. How do we change that fundamental, fundamental theory of it, right? How do we make that cheaper to go send up these to get more measurements on the universe expanding on what the hell is dark matter? Is there multiverse? I don't fucking know, but those scientists and engineers can set up instruments to go help us understand it. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.